want your joy back? Amen. How many of you want your joy back? Yeah. Remember when you were a little kid and you just didn't have a care in the world and everything was funny and yeah. you know you you weren't like so rigid and scared to be happy? Yeah. Like the enemy does not want you happy. He wants you mad. Serious all the time. I remember working and, and people would always ask me, why are you always so serious? You always look mad and mean. Ooh, I had a mean look on my face. Like, I wish you would say something. <laughs> I will cut you. <laughs> Am I lying, Ricky? Thinking, Ricky, oh, I used to be a mess. I used to, I used to, I used to be, am I lying, Tanya? I used to be a mess. People be like, ooh, she only this big, but I ain't messing with her. But she look crazy. Listen. We're going to come out of uh, Mark, chapter 16. Amen. 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 You used to be a lot bigger than you back then, though. Right. <laughs> that part. <laughs> Mark 16. 704. Mark 16. Um. So what's really interesting, you know God always gives me like some crazy information, right? We're going to prayerfully learn some stuff today. So, without further ado, we're going to come out of uh, the 16th chapter of the Gospel of Mark. We're going to start at verse 14. Amen? Amen? And the subtitle of the scripture is the Great Commission. I read New King James Version, and it reads, Later, he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be what? Condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Huh? Is that what it said? Yeah. This is the reading of the word. Father God, I want to thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, I pray right now that the Holy Spirit will move mightily over the vicinity of this house. Put a holy ring of fire around this building, around my mind, around my heart, and my mouth. Father, I call a legion of angels from the north, the south, the east, the west. Warring angels, ministering angels, protective angels, healing angels. Put your warring watchmen at the front door and the back door, Lord. The blood of the lamb over the doorpost of this house. Father, I pray right now that you allow me to decrease. That your Holy Spirit increase. Father, I ask for fresh oil, fresh fire, fresh wind. Father, I pray that you will move mightily. Father, we lift up our men of God that are absent from the house. 
Father, use them ex wherever, in the exact precise position that they are right here, right now. Let them touch and agree in the spirit that they are a part of this service. Father, I ask that you will give them traveling grace and mercy. Father, I come against the witches, the warlocks, the dust blowers, the soothsayers, the sorcerers, the chief principalities and rulers of darkness. They have no authority in this house. Every demon must tremble and flee at the name of Jesus. Father, allow me to teach this word. Father, it's a message within a message. Father, allow us to dissect this word, that we can digest this word, that we can produce fruit for your kingdom. Father, I pray in the mighty name of my Lord and my Savior. Father, I am not worthy, but you saved a wretch like me to be your mouthpiece. And Lord, I stand before you in all humility, and I give you permission to just take over, Lord. Get rid of my flesh and have your way. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Give God some praise. Amen. Amen. The title of today's message is Rebuild His Church. Amen. Rebuild His Church. Many of you don't understand. We are in a prophetic window of time. How many of you really understand that this world is really weird right now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yes. There is so much going on and it's speeding up daily. So if you've been nudged to seek God, you better seek Him while He is to be found. Mm -hmm. You better not get complacent nor comfortable and allow yourself to think you have time to get it together. So let's talk about the first church with the Lord Jesus. Who is all God and all man on this earth? He disrobed himself out of heaven, mm -hmm. came through the way of a woman's womb, was birthed, lived, went through everything we've gone through, and then some. Because none of us have ever been crucified. Mm -hmm. None of us have ever been whooped. And, and, and I don't know if you noticed, but they're trying to erase who Jesus was. Oh, y'all better wake up. True. They're literally trying to erase Jesus. They're trying to make the scriptures seem like it's just a man-made book. They're even uh, coming up with AI They've already come up with it. Mm -hmm. Technology mm -hmm. that is creating sermons yeah. on church. Mm -hmm. And people went out of curiosity and their feedback was it, there was no spirit attached to it. It was dead. It was dry. It was, it was a bunch of words just being spoken like you watching a movie, seeing everything happening. But all you're doing is reading the subtitles, so there's no interaction. When you watch a movie, you're engaged, you're involved, you get excited, you can feel the tension and the, you know, the suspense. You know that in Jerusalem right now, if you're a Christian and you talk about Jesus, you're going to jail? Uh, 
Y'all better wake up. That's it. While, while they've been distracting everybody with that little submarine that went missing. <laughs> whole lot of stuff that happened over the weekend. <laughs> whole lot of stuff. They approved fake meat being made. Oh, wow. Yeah. Warehouses. Yeah. Huh? I've seen that. Washington, they already started to where they can start putting their restaurants. Yeah. 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 Fake meat. Stop going to the restaurants. They, 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 listen, 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 beloved. Y'all better pay attention. God, listen, I can't, I, I kept asking God, like, how come there's only so little few people that come here? He said, daughter, the remnant is small. Amen. It ain't meant for everybody to come to this house. Amen. So if you found yourself here, there's a reason. Amen. He chose you to be here because he loves you. Amen. Amen. And this is the unadulterated word of God being preached and taught. Because he wants to prepare you for his return. Amen. Later, he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. What? You, you saw the man hanging on the cross. You saw the man be put in the tomb. And now you see the man walking around and you, you, you're trying to say, that's fake. I didn't really see what I saw. I, 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 beloved, Jesus in this text openly rebukes his disciples for their unbelief and hardness of heart. Okay. Before I go any further, let me blow your wigs off. Y'all got your seatbelts on online? Huh? Because check this out. Do you know that Mark 16, huh? That the gospel of Mark 16, uh, 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 9 through 20, do you know that it is said that it shouldn't be in the Bible? Mm. Did anybody just catch mm. that? It ain't supposed, it shouldn't be in there. Mm. We should take that out. Mm. <coughs> oh. We should take that out. You know why? Huh? Because King James manuscripts was the, 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 the translation. Huh? Right? And, 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 and the, who had their hand in it? The Vatican. Huh? But if you understand that when you go back, huh, to the real, original, real deal Holyfield, huh? See, pick up your Bibles now. New Living Translation, the NIV, New International Version, and there are scriptures missing. Can you imagine the whole chapter 16 being removed mm. from the Bible. Mm. They want it gone. Right. Because the argument now is that it wasn't found in the Vaticanus and the Synodicus, the oldest manuscripts, which are from the Alexandrian line. Y'all know who Alexander the Great was, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he got, you know, when he, anybody got any power, any influence, they influence and they do whatever, right? So, so because he decided, I don't want that in there because Alexander the Great hated Jesus. Wasn't he the one killing, with Nero? Yep. Killing Christians? Mm -hmm. What did Alexander do? <laughs> anybody know? <laughs> I don't got time for a history lesson, but come on. What was they trying to do? Control the people. What are, what's happening right now? They're trying to control the people. Y'all better wake up. So guess what they're doing? They're minimizing access to the Bible. Do you know that I did a Facebook Live, what was that, Thursday, and they bleeped me off in the middle of the live? And the, the, the 
title of the message was a target on my back and it was talking about all these children being used for sacrifices and the video disintegrated in the middle of me talking it's still on YouTube but Facebook booted me off I didn't get a note I didn't get a warning I didn't get nothing. They ain't said a word to me about why they did that. Don't you think that's strange? Right. Mm -hmm. Huh? We're talking way too much on that. So, let me tell you what Jesus said in this text. He said, uh, uh, uh. He said, uh, 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 the scripture says, he rebuked them. So let's look at why would they want to remove this? Because he's rebuking people for their unbelief. I don't want you to be a believer. So let me take this out the Bible. Huh? So there is no question, is Jesus really real or not? <laughs> So if I take this whole scripture out, it will never make somebody who's on the fence debate, is Jesus real or he ain't real? It will never make somebody who got a hardened heart full of pride, well, I, I don't believe that rocks and trees are real. They're just an inanimate, they're, at, they're objects. But a tree is alive. A tree has cells, photosynthesis. It, it, it absorbs light. And if you cut a tree, huh? It regrows. It, 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 it hurts. And if you stick an object with the right type of equipment, you can create electricity. Google it. Why do you think they, they're cutting down all the trees all over the world? Mm -hmm. They're desensitizing the brain. Mm -hmm. They don't want you awake. They don't want you alert. When the last time you took your shoes and socks off and walked through the dirt, through the grass? How many of you as a kid put your feet in the grass? It will reground your body. Yeah. It will recharge your body. You feeling sluggish? Feeling tired? Go stand in the grass. You got a little patch in front of your house? Take your shoes off and I double dog dare you to go stand in it and see what happens. See if it starts affecting your day to day activity. See if it starts channeling you back because God made us from dirt. Let's remove everything to keep us dummy down. Now, Jesus was rebuking them for unbelief. And I hate to say this, beloved, some of us still got areas where, well, I trust you, Lord, and I know that you're the God of all gods, but this part right here, like, I just, I just, you know, when, when it comes to this, I, I, I got to keep this one for me because I don't think you can fix this, God. So I'm going to just hold it like my little baby and I'm just not going to give it to you because I really don't trust you. I really don't believe you can fix it. So that hard-headed child of mine, I'll just keep it to myself, Lord. That broken sister of mine, I'll just keep it to myself, Lord. Those parents of mine that are all strung out on drugs or alcoholics, I'll just keep that to me, Lord. Oh, my wayward wife or wayward husband or atheist husband or atheist, <coughs> I'll keep it to myself, Lord. Because see, once you let go and you really let God, that means you really believe Him. Amen. Oh, it's quiet on the set. <laughs> Anybody play dominoes? Yes, yes. I like talking a little mess when I play. <laughs> and when, I, when I'm winning, I'll be like, oh, quiet on the set, quiet on the set. I mean, I'm scoring, I'm whooping your butt, right? 
God needs to spank us a little bit. Huh? To make us aware of what is really going on. And there are some of us that got a little bit of unbelief left in us. And I'm here today to tell you to put your kingdom building mind on. Get that hat and put it on and stop thinking like you. Start believing what this word says. Amen. When's the last time you got up at 4 or 5 or 6 in the morning and sat with the word of God? Amen. Who did it this morning? Why? Did you, did you wake up? Yes. Did you wake up? Yeah. Are you really here? Are y'all breathing? Yeah. So why didn't we get up and give him five, at minimum five minutes? How about 35 seconds? Father God, thank you, Jesus, for giving me another day. Oh, bless my day. Help me walk my way, Lord. Or no, I scratched that. Make me walk the way you want me to walk, Lord. Then open your eyes. How hard was that? Start doing it. Every day. You see our babies come up here? Our young ladies came up here? You see how the Holy Spirit touched their heart? When you, when you hear certain music and you'll, you begin to cry, that, that ain't nothing to be shame of. That means the Spirit of God Amen. just fell on them. Amen. Don't be ashamed. Encourage them. Baby, you was in the face of God when that happened. He just touched you. So let me let me let me tell you what the word of God really thinks of unbelievers. And I've shared this last week, so it must be important because he's repeating it again. Revelation chapter 21, and I'm going to the seventh verse. He who overcomes, that means whatever you're going through, huh? And you overcome it, huh? Means you trusted him to get through it, right? Amen. Shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Amen. But the cowardly, unbelieving, unbelieving, cowardly, cowardly meaning I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a child of God, but I'm not going to tell nobody to pray. I'm not going to encourage anybody by saying Jesus loves you. I'm not going to invite them to church. I'm not going to talk about the gospel with a stranger that I just met on the dog park. I'm not going to go out my way to tell somebody, hey, God bless you. You coward. Oh. God said, be bold in the spirit, but humble as a dove. Be wise as a serpent and humble as a dove. Huh? See, the, 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 the serpent was cunning. He was smart. He was meticulous. He said, but the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable murderers sexually uh, 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 immoral sorcerers idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone which is the second death this ain't no joke this ain't no joke Huh? This ain't no joke. Wow. Really? That's how God sees an unbeliever? That's how God sees some of his people who are too cowardly to share the gospel? Don't get fooled. Just because you come to church, beloved, don't mean you're going to meet the maker and get entered into the gate. You might get there and he'd be like, I don't know you. 
You going the other way. You ain't coming in. Your heart just as ugly. You so prideful and selfish and deceitful and abusive. The whole time you was in a position of, of leadership, you abused your people. You got a lot of pastors that abuse their people. Right? You got a lot of people who are in ministry that hurt the body of Christ. That blood is on their hands. Because the Bible says that's going to be the first place of judgment where judgment comes is the church. So those of you that are up and coming ministers and evangelists and pastors and teachers, listen, don't be so in a hurry to do that job unless you're really ready to be accountable. Revelation 21, 7 through 8 gives a clear, loud warning against unbelievers. So there is this uh, 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 sociologist, and according to this sociologist named Phil Zuckerman, professor of sociology and sec uh, secular studies, at Pitzer College, right here in good old Claremont, California. Anybody know where Claremont, California is at? Yeah. Yes. So there's this college, Pitzer, Pitzer College, where this professor professes he knows his stuff. Hmm? And according to him, he estimates those who have an absence of belief in God. Y'all ready for the number? Somebody Google how many people are on the world right now. I forgot to uh, uh, write it down last night. Roughly how many people are there in the world right now? 7.8. Oh. 7.8 what? Billion? Yeah. Million or billion? Billion. Billion. Half is right. As of after COVID? Yeah. yeah. No, well, no. This one says uh, after January 1st, 23 is 7 billion 940. Just million. the first part. 7 billion? Okay, we'll go with that. All right? So, some, who's good at math in here? You? Daniel, you good at math? Who good at math? Y'all ain't good at math. You young people well, supposed to be well, good at math. I know 10% of stuff. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Where my mathematicians at? So let's listen. So we got seven, let's just round it up. Seven, seven billion people, right? What is the percentage out of seven billion people if out of that seven billion Huh? Y'all listening? That the range of unbelievers is 500 to 750 million. So we'll go with the higher number, 750 million out of 7 billion. What is the percentage of that? 10%. 10%. Yeah. Uh, 10% would be 7 million. Right. Well, she just went with the uh, right. So it's 14 percent. So, so 10, right? 10%. Oh, so y'all is paying attention. <laughs> so did y'all catch that? Amen. What did God say would be his remnant? 10%. Are y'all paying attention to how accurate our God is? Seven billion people on the earth and only 750 million people are unbelievers, which means there is only a tenth of people that believe. So the top five countries, y'all ready? Of the highest amount of agnostics and atheists who guesses what? Let me let me hear what countries y'all think it is. I'm gonna play with y'all for a minute. Name a country. United States. Keep going. China. Asia. Okay, Asia. What else? Russia. Okay, Russia. What else? Korea. Okay, come on. China. 
which I don't know what else. Think, think uncommon places. India. Keep going. Thailand. Turkey. Keep, keep going. Korea. Poland. Antarctica. Iraq. <laughs> countries, countries. Oh, countries. Uh, Alaska. Italy. Okay. Egypt. Sweden, Sweden is number one. Sweden, where's CERN at? Ooh. Ooh. Switzerland. That thing you showed us last time, that parade that had that bull. That's that Sweden. Was, yeah. Switzerland, the Swiss. The Swiss. Forty. The, the 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 amount of agnostics and atheists in that country is up to eighty-five percent of the people that live there do not believe in God. How about Vietnam? Eighty-one percent do not believe in God. Denmark, up to eighty percent. Norway. 72%. Japan, 65%. Oh, Professor Phil is known for several books. Uh, and some of the titles of his books are Living the Secular Life. The other one is Faith No More. And then the last one that I decided to share is called Society Without God. And he, in his very existence upon this earth, offers up two very different views of religion and secular relationship. So there's two different ways that he looks at it, okay? Now, today, as of today, 64% of Americans claim and call themselves Christians. Let me blow your wigs off with this one. 50 years ago, 90% of Americans were professing Christians. So we went from 90% to 64%. And out of the 64%, really only 10% are living Christ-like. Y'all wow. Wow. got me? So everybody you talk to, like, oh, girl, I know, I, I, I believe in God. What God you praying to? Mm -hmm. The one of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Mm -hmm. You believe in the Messiah? Do you believe he died on the cross? You believe the death, burial, and the resurrection? Do you believe that you have to die to your flesh daily? Do you believe that you cannot be you and live as you've been living? Do you believe that you have to change some things in your walk? Do you believe that your flesh is all nasty, filthy, disgusting? Or do you think it's still okay to watch pornography? Do you think it's okay to still smoke weed? Do you think it's okay to still have frivolous sex with anybody and everybody you want to? Do you think it's okay to tell a few little lies? Do you think it's okay to be a thief and a murderer? Do you think it's okay for homosexuality? If you do, then you really ain't Christ-like. Mm -hmm. He don't like it. He don't like it. And it's against him. <laughs> do you know there are people having sex with animals? Yeah. The most vile and depraved thing you can think of, they are doing. There was a video I seen yesterday where this man was admitting to aborted babies, body parts being used for vaccines. We are living in a very demonic world right now. Very demonic. And everything you're doing and participating in, you can't go buy a bag of chips without the alphabet flag being on it. And there's a there's a movement going on right back right now. Take back our rainbow. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So everything God did, the devil mimics and copycats. 
Does he not? Yes. He hates God. So why not use everything God has for his convenience to fool the people? And you got folks excited that claim. Did, did I tell y'all the testimony? We was together at that other place, at that other place. <laughs> And half the church, you too. I think you was there, or was you there yet? Or I don't know if you was there yet, or did you start? They pride, pride, the parade for pride. The whole church didn't show up to church. And then the next Sunday, I was like, "Hey, where were you? What happened to you last week, girl? It was the pride parade." Wait, hold on. I wonder how many of our people are at the Pride Parade. Wow. Because my son had to go to work at Starbucks. I said, they making you participate in it? And he said, yeah. I said, I guess. See, and, and, and it's because of we think that job is our provider. Right. God go judge us. That's right. He, you, you have an excuse. You have a, you have a voice. I'm not working this. Yeah. I don't participate in this. But because you shut your mouth, mm -hmm. can I be real, y'all? Amen. See, I'm gonna get this blood off my hands. When I get to Jesus, I want to be like, can you put on my extra crispy white robe, Lord? Amen. I want the extra crispy Amen. with the starch and all. Yeah. Yeah. Because you have no, well, you do, Lord. You know how much mess I've been through Amen. trying to be your daughter. Huh? You guys, I know we think things are okay. But you got to really ask yourself, there is a spirit behind that. And I want to say this, this spirit, there was an article I read yesterday, and they did a, a follow-up video. They went into a house where they, they got a call that there was a deceased man. When they got to the house, there was about five other grown men dressed as women and there were children locked in a back room about five little kids who the people kept telling no oh, ain't nobody else in the house ain't nobody else here and the cops for whatever reason searched their house mm -hmm. and found these kids locked up hidden and they were having the O word, I got kids in here, with, with toys and drugs and doing very weird fetish type things that involve the children. There is a teacher that is telling her student, please don't use the P word in my classroom. You should not judge people because there's nothing wrong if somebody wants to be, it, we, we use the word map. I just told, I'm going to share it next week. M-A-P. Who remember what it mean? What it mean? Um, what it mean? Yeah, what? Minor attracted. Yeah. Yeah. Minor attracted. What? There you go. They're minor. They're, they're attracted to babies. So the teacher says, we're not going to use the P word. We're going to use M-A-P. Because you sh it, it should not be none of your concern if somebody wants to have sex with a five-year-old. Oh and the student recorded her. Y'all better wake up. These schools is, is really in this stuff. So if you keep going along with the program, Oh, and you see how quick they shut targets down with that move? Yeah. Enough yeah. is enough. Christ-like man of God. Christ-like woman of God. Disciple of the Most High. Why are you letting this stuff keep going and going and going and going and going and going? And you know what they think? The church is allowing it. 
Yeah. So we're going to take more. We're going to do more. You got old heads that dress in performance in that lifestyle who are now speaking out against these men that are using this as a doorway to pedophilia. They don't like it. Come on, y'all. Come on. Come on. We better wake up. Huh? It says, so 50 years ago, 90% were Christians. And they went to church. 50 years ago. Who's in here over 50? I know I had to go to church every Sunday. You was going to church. Wasn't no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Huh? And it says that according to the Pew Research Center study, by 2070, Christianity may disappear completely. Wow. How many years is that from now? 47. Less than 50. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and pay attention. The word of God says when the gathering up comes, there won't be any believers left, yeah. any saints left. Yeah. So they, those that are left are going to have time to try to find him. But if they're trying to get rid of the word, trying to erase all the, 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 the avenues to learn about God, who's going to be there to teach him the truth? Wow. Wow. Huh? So Isaiah 5 20 says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. What did Minister Lulu read for her scripture this morning? Do you remember? First John. Uh huh. Let me let me let me see if I can find it real quick. First John 2, 11 and 12. Where did it go? Where did it go? Can you can you read it because it was short? First John with about the darkness part. Yes. Okay. About the it's darkness. About the darkness, but he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Okay, wait. Isaiah 5 and 20 says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, right? But this next part of that verse says who put darkness for light and light for darkness? Who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter? Don't you know, Minister Lulu was already in my message this morning? Huh? We have been sitting at the table of the Most High with other disciples. Beloved, every one of you that belong to Sovereign Shepherd, you have been sitting at the table with Jesus and the time has come to go forth. See, these men witnessed supernatural events and they witnessed Jesus alive after the crucifixion and all of the miracles and the deliverances. And yet, their hearts were still held in unbelief and hardness for, the, for other people? How is that possible? How are you sitting here? Let, let, let me finish this thought first. The Lord gave a rebuke. Huh? And it is at this rebuke where the rebuild began. Or in other words, where the building began for them, where the rebuild begins in this house. Yeah. It is at this rebuke that I challenge the church. Hallelujah. It is at this rebuke that I challenge you. Are you gonna continue to have a hardened heart? Are you gonna continue to walk in unbelief? Huh? What's your answer, church? No, 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 no. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Beloved online, it's time to rebuild the church. Saints of God. Huh? Amen. The disciples were called to do what for Jesus? To spread the gospel. And we are also called to rebuild his church. Amen. We all, yes, come on, Amen. somebody. Amen. You be called. Amen. It ain't time to play. Listen, we all have witnessed. Everybody, the majority, except for maybe one or two of you. How many of y'all have ever witnessed a miracle in this house? Amen. How many of you have Amen. witnessed? Somebody being demonically freed in this house. Raise your hand. How many of you have watched the Holy Spirit take over and give a prophetic word in this house? Raise your hand. So guess what? That means almost over 95% of you are being disobedient. You should be out there doing what Deacon Will and Miss Bonita did. Evangelizing. Brother, sister, I, 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 got a, I got an unction in my heart to invite you to my church. We live in, do you believe, and this is how you start the conversation, do you believe that our world is crazy right now? Absolutely. Let me ask you another question. Do you believe God is real and the devil's real? Absolutely. And as soon as they say yes, ask them, are you going to a church where you see fruit? Amen. Where you're watching people being delivered? Amen. I got. I go to a church where we literally are watching people get healed, set free, and delivered. Do you want to know about it? That's all you got to do. Amen. What is the problem, saints? God is going to ask you, Amen. why have you been sitting on your hands all this time? I called you to be disciples. I called you to be fishers of men. Just because you ain't in this pulpit don't mean nothing. You have been adopted into the family of God. Amen. You all have an accountability. All of us. Not just the pastor. Oh, I'm not the pastor. I'm not on leadership. I'm not on the prayer team. I'm not an intercessor. I'm not a deacon. What that mean? Did you accept him as your Lord and Savior? Amen. Then you got a responsibility, beloved. Anybody getting anything out of this? You've got some praise. I want to remind us that we have literally witnessed people come through these doors. Many have walked through these doors. And then they walk out still with their hardened hearts and unbelief. Because when they walked out, they quickly were attacked by the enemy. Phone calls, text messages. Right? Instead of one of y'all being like, brother, sister, you have had an incredible <clears throat> encounter with God today. Don't, don't, don't lose it. Because the enemy is going to come after you. The enemy is going to try to tempt you. You need to, you need to stay plugged in. We have a Bible study in, on Tuesday. I'll see you there, right? We can't even do it on our own porch. Y'all better, y'all better shift. 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 Amen. Y'all better shift. Amen. This, I'm not asking you. I am warning you. Amen. And I am telling you. And then when you get before me, you're going to be like, why you didn't listen to my apostle? <laughs> why you didn't listen to my prophet? And he will go back and show you all the... You think I'm lying? No, you're telling the truth. He going to show you every single time you were warned. And you were asked. And you were reminded. And you're going to sit there and be like, dang, she showed me 1,500 times over... I was there for eight years and... Wait, nine years and... Every Sunday, she said the same thing over and over. And this is the three, what, what sermon is this? This is the 344th sermon, not to include end time, noon time. Today is my 344th message. I started counting when we came in this building. Amen. Or right before we left the other building. 
Congratulations. That's a lot. Huh? I'm not bragging. But every day of my life, I live it as a Christ-like representative. Okay? We need to know God is calling. Amen. Huh? And he is se uh, separating. And he is judging his people. He has started in the church. And many are going to say, Lord, Lord. And his response will be, away from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Beloved, Jesus loves us so much. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Ask your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. have you gotten a gift from God yet? Remind your neighbor, 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 you have a gift from God. You have a gift from God. You woke up this morning. You woke up this morning. Huh? Thank you. Yeah. Think about it. That's right. Life is a gift. Life is a gift. Come on. I want to ask another question. How many of you? have been really blessed and understand that what you witness Sunday after Sunday on this altar, that it is a blessing Amen. to see what you've been seeing. Amen. Huh? You have literally witnessed miracle after miracle after miracle. But how many of you have went and shared it with somebody. Praise God. And what do they say? Where's your church? <laughs> so, you done planted a seed. Now it's time to water it. Right. Sis, I thought you was coming. Right. You keep asking me. You keep. I keep telling you where the church is at. Man, you should have been there this week. This is yeah. what happened. Yeah. Oh, and last week we had a little two-year-old baby that had a demon. And that baby got free. The other week we had a little four-year-old little girl. And that baby got healed. Amen. 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 Talk about it. Follow up. Amen. One will plant. God will. Right? He, he'll give the increase. But you got you to gotta plant the seed. You got to water the seed. Amen. <laughs> I want to remind you, God chose you. Look at you, look at your neighbor and say, God chose you. God chose you. And He chose me. And He chose me. And God chooses. And God chooses. Whom He pleases. Whom He pleases. And He chose us. And He chose us. Just like the first disciples. Huh? I'm going to be just like the first disciples. I, too, me, have a responsibility. But I bet you one thing. When I take my last breath, I want to make sure I have poured out everything that God has ever given me. And I don't have an ounce left to pour. build his church. Huh? The 15th verse says, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. What is a creature? No, 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 no,
creature. You are a new creature in Christ. If he is the creator, you are the creature. Amen. Huh? You are the creature. The devil tried to make a creature into this weird thing. Remember creature features? Uh -huh. yeah. Make it ugly. I don't want you to identify yourself as being made in God's image and likeness. I want you to think of a creature as something hideous and ugly. You see how slick the devil is? But you are, because when you hear the word creature, ain't that what you think? No, you are a creature. We're new creatures in Christ. Amen. He said, are y'all learning anything today? Yes. yes. Preach the gospel to every creature. Preach it to, I'm almost done, to every person that you come in contact with. To every creature. Not some, not Okay, I got selective uh, discipleship going on. I'm just, you know, I'm going to drop it over here, but I ain't telling you and I ain't talking to you. To every creature. Somebody say every creature. Every creature. Mm -hmm. Mean it, every creature. Uh, every creature. And, and, and I need you to understand that you have to ask yourself, when God asks me, did you help rebuild my church? Huh? What will your answer be to God when he asks you that? What did you do to represent his kingdom while you, quote, claimed to be confessing and professing that you are a Christian? While here on earth, ooh, mm. that hit below the bell. I want somebody to let this sink in and let it sink in real deep because we just witnessed this beautiful lady in the back. Wait, I forgot her name again. Carol. 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 I'm bad when I got six sons. I can't keep none of their names straight, so don't take it personal. And I got Dennis. <laughs> and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Ain't that what Deacon Will did? So listen, listen to 16. He who believes and is what? Baptized. Baptized will be what? Saved. But he who does not believe will what? Be condemned. What was the first thing she said? I want to get baptized. Listen. We are about to be so loud about dying to flesh that folks around you are going to be so desperate to be baptized. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're going to be clamoring to get. It's already happening. Mm -hmm. There is an urgency in the air, saints of God. He who does not believe will be condemned. And condemnation means sentenced to punishment, especially by way of death, eternal damnation, destruction, the final verdict, hell for all eternity. I don't know about you, but I don't want no parts of that. Amen. Saints, God has sent Jesus to earth to fulfill a very specific assignment and he did just that and he taught his disciples along the way and they watched they witnessed healings and demons being cast out and the time has come for you all of you to be vessels for the Lord 
to use your very selves and for you to fulfill your purpose on this planet. You got a purpose to fulfill. Kingdom builders, it's time to build. It's time to move in the face. It's time for you to confess and to profess. It's time to understand. Wilt thou be made well? Amen. Saints, they must believe in order to be made well. Carol has to believe that God can heal her Amen. for her to receive it. Yes. When I prayed over Sheila, she thought somebody told her. I, I didn't know I didn't know that girl. I never met her in a day in my life. <coughs> and I prayed over her. And this girl was couldn't drive a car. She went for a doctor visit and her doctor gave her a driver license back. Amen. What medical person would grant a seizure with their license back? You know. Amen. Mia yeah. came and got healed, set freed, and delivered. Amen. Huh? Why? Because she wanted it. And I confess it. See, didn't I say that earlier? About telling the truth? Mm -hmm. She set me free before I just never confessed it to God, and I didn't want it as bad as I wanted it. But See that? Y'all heard that at the beginning of the service. We we tell God, take this, take this, use this. Here, I'm going to give you this. I'm going to let you have that. But guess what? Until you confess what your issue is, you tell God, I got a stronghold with this. It ain't going nowhere. The devil will be outside waiting for you. Yes. Yes. You didn't give it up. You did not give it up. Huh? I want to I wanna close with this. Will you pray today that God will make you bold enough to start sharing his message? Will I get somebody in this house that is really willing to commit to fighting for Christ Jesus? Amen. Is there anybody in the house that's willing to say, we're going to take our rainbow back? Amen. <laughs> tongues huh how many of you are not going to be fearful about casting demons out or praying with purpose Amen. Amen. the time is now beloved Amen. it's time to take up serpents they won't harm you you can't be afraid of darkness beloved because you are the light Amen. Amen. Right. what are you afraid of Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. I see your light. I see your light. And you shine brightly. And you shine brightly. For the kingdom of God. For the kingdom of God. I want you to look at your neighbor. Neighbor. And ask him, is it okay if I give you a hug? Is it okay if I give you a hug? Because I want to share some of your light. I want to share some of your light.
Amen. 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 Come on, somebody. We gon' we gonna get the devil up out of here. Amen. He ain't got no authority. None whatsoever. You heard me? Ain't no seed this house this house Okay. and agree. Father, we ask that the Holy Spirit to just completely decrease me and increase you. Father, I ask that the Holy Spirit will move mightily Huh? For our brothers and sisters on live, Father, so many are going through things. And this is an open invitation for them to leave it at the altar. And just because they're not physically here, there is no time or space because you're an omnipotent, omnipresent God. And Father, I want to lift up right here, right now, Shania's co-worker, Marie. Is she on live watching? No, she's not. She's supposed to be here, but she just didn't show Can you tell her to get on live? And and I give me He's gonna touch her. Father, we wanna lift up. On behalf of Deshanique and Yoli from Namonte. But Father, you've already spoken it in my ear because he has walked away from you. He's being afflicted. Father, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Sin leads to sickness and sickness unto death. And people don't understand that sickness unto death can be spiritually dead and it can also mean physically dead father namate needs to repent and i ask lord that you will touch his heart because without his repentance he's going to carry this so lord i ask that on behalf of his mother and his sisters and his brothers and his extended family that you will give them a peace that surpasses all human understanding to understand why this is happening. Because as soon as he's ready, Lord, by your stripes, he's healed. It's already done. Father, we want the blessings, but we don't want the one who blesses us. And those Those afforded to experience the goodness of God need to understand that that window has closed. That the time for the separation from the sheep and the goats is so urgent. And that there will not be long <coughs> suffering. Their yes needs to be yes and their no will be a no. So Lord, have your way over this situation. Father, I wanna lift up Shania's coworker, Marie, and I pray right now, Lord, if she's not on yet, and she gets on, that she will follow my instruction that is being directed through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray right now that you will touch Her reproductive organs. 
The Holy Spirit says it's dead. Our parts are dead. They're no good. There we go. Right now, she will receive it to believe it and believe it to receive it. He's going to give her restoration. And her whole body is going to feel differently. Father, right now, I come against the spirit of infertilization. I come against the spirit of fibroids. I come against the spirit of endometriosis. There it goes. Marie, put your hands on your, your, your womb. Receive it. Right here, right now. Have your way, Holy Spirit. You're not a man that you lie, Lord. And your word says when two or more touch and agree, you are in the midst. If there is anybody in here with any of those things that I just spoke of, put your hand over your womb. Because the healing ain't just for her. Those of you that have fibroids in your uterus, Fire in the name of the Holy Spirit. There we go. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. And those of you that partook by touching your womb, for the next 24 hours, drink nothing but water and flush your bodies out. Father, I ask if there are any unbelievers that they truly welcome you in their hearts today. If there is anybody that doesn't have a church home, Lord, Allow them to message me. If there's somebody on there that needs private prayer, let them reach out, Father. We bless you and we honor you and we thank you for our own live family, Lord. And we give you all glory and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. and amen. amen.